Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're doing uh, four upgrades to our 3D printer using the 3D printer. All right, so yeah, today uh, we just wanted to do free prints, um, also using this kind of dialing in the printer. Mm -hmm. uh, get a little elephant's foot, which I'll show you what it was and how I fixed it. And all of these prints were from Thingverse, and I'll put the links in the description uh, if you want to look at those. All right, so the first one is, this is going to, to hold our scraper. Very simple design and it keeps the scraper uh, handy where we can use it. Now this was the first one that I did and you'll see it printing up in the corner. Uh, I did not record all the prints because they did take a long time but this one got elephant's foot. This is what this is called where the first few layers actually spread out. Now the reason that this happened is because I got the bed uh, when I was leveling it actually got it too close uh, to where the head of the hot end is so that those first layers were smashed. Um, and as we go through the next three, uh, I kind of dialed it into where we ended up with really good first layers. So the second one I printed, we still have just a little bit, but only on one side. So I got this side dialed in really well and this side just a little bit. So I went back and I lowered that side of the bed just a little bit for the next one. But this print, is for the z-axis motor so i'll talk about this a little bit more when we put it on but it spaces the motor out and will straighten the rail our third print and this one really came out nicely um, is just a cover for the lcd screen it'll go on the back side of it uh, it's got holes for um, what's needed and then screw holes for it. So this one you'll see in the video, I forgot to turn off the supports. So it built supports and it certainly didn't need it. This is just barely a hangover, but it's there anyway. It doesn't hurt it. It just makes your print a little bit longer. But we finally dialed in the bottom of it and it printed great after that. The final one we have are, these are slots that will slide in and keep your rails clean. Now, I only printed six of these because I only want them in places that might get dirty. These front two and the sides, uh, we'll fill that in. If it happens other places, we can always print more. Uh, the files got it in multiple sizes and you just pick the size uh, that you want to print and throw it in. So there are more things that we want to print off of this that are going to be great upgrades. However, we want to customize those a little bit uh, for our printer so that it you know kind of shows us a little. So with these, it's going to be a little bit easier to put uh, all of them on at once as opposed to individually because I don't want to take things off more than once. So we're just going to go ahead and pull the machine apart where we need to, throw these in, and uh, we'll show you how we do it. So we're going to start with the LCD screen. We've got two rails for behind that as well as the cover. So let's pull that off. Uh, I believe it's one of these Allen wrenches. Yep, it's this one. So uh, we'll have Aaron pull that off real quick. All right, so this is Allen's as well. Let's get the right size. And I'm going to skip these things because they're a pain. They're a pain. Let's get out. There we go. All right, while she's pulling that apart, I'm going to take two of the rails we made. Now, these are sized for our front three, so two of the small ones we're going to slide in. Now that slides right over this piece on the circuit board as well as the three ports to plug into. All right, don't forget to plug it in the same spot. It's three, even though it's for some reason has three different ports, right? That was the right one. Yeah. And then put it back in place. 
You can't see. You need to flip. Oh, you already flipped that over. Yeah, so we're gonna, we've got rails for this as well. I'm not sure the best way to get this in. Um, kind of take mental note of where your tension's at. I don't think this will slide in. Maybe it will. Nope. I'm gonna take out the front two on each side so that I can just pivot the whole thing down should give us enough clearance to slide these in. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm using an Allen wrench to push this out to the right tension and then I'm just gonna have Aaron tighten it where it's at and we will do the same thing on the other side. All right, for our last two, it go on this side. So we've got to take out the screws that hold the main motherboard in place. Be careful with this. Uh, we're just gonna take it off as small amount as we can and slide them in. There's just a few screws holding this on, so we're gonna get them all. Um, you have to move the bed around to get to it. All right, so we've got the board slid all the way forward. And move your hands so we can see the screw. That is where the screw is for the back side of it. All right, and the last one is right here. Let's get that off, and then we should be able to take the top cover off. All right, so this didn't fully come off, but it is what we needed to be able to slide it down to slide the rails in. All right, now we will get those screws back in. It's the two here and then two on the front. If you needed to take this off completely, there's just a couple more on the bottom. All right, we're gonna put the scraper on, scraper holder on. Now this goes on into these rails, so you gotta take their top one off. I'll pull the filament off just in case. All right, we can just hold this back and slide that in. Yeah, if it doesn't fit, it's because of the elephant foot. All right, so this is what I was afraid of with how those bottom layers got smashed right in here. So it's not gonna slide on there well. So we're gonna get a file out, kind of smooth out those bottom layers, and then we'll slide it on. All right, after with some messing around with it, got it to fit and should slide right on down. Yep. Yep, and this is made to just sit on top of the power supply and then Scraper fits right in it. Last piece is going to be the spacer for this motor. Um, essentially, all of this has to come off, so we are going to pull it all apart and we'll get it fit. All right, we can set this aside carefully. Now, let me show you why we're doing this. If you come in this motor, and then look at the rail as it goes up. It gets farther away as it goes up. This is not straight. So it's bending this rod out and then the machine is actually flexing it. So over time, this rod's gonna bend. The spacer is gonna space it out to where the rod's straight up and down the whole time. So let's get this in and get that part fixed. These 
don't are not on inside the rail they're just threaded in the back and we're also going to pull this part off this is how this piece is going to fit on so i'm going to put those screws right back in all right so we had a couple m3s uh from other projects and that's what this thread pattern is so we're going to put two m3s on the front and then we'll put these back in for the back side Let's slide it in This is uh, blocking me from being able to get in it with the new piece on there, so got to take that off. So what I did is I put this through the threaded hole so that I could line up the other side. And don't tighten this too much. Uh, you don't want to break the plastic. We just want it to hold it. All right, now we can put this and... All right, now let's get the gantry back on. All right, now let's look from the side and see how that rail is. It should be much straighter up and down now than it was before. Yeah, so that is looking way better than it was before. It just had a bit of an angle. So like I said, we don't want to bend that over time. Um, Everything's good. You're going to get it all wired back up and put back together. All right, get our filament back on. Get that push back in the tube. This is actually nice. You can see it go through. Now, scraper slides right into the slot so now we don't have to find a place for it all right so that's our first round of upgrades some for cleanliness keeping our uh... absolutely keep that circuit board clean keep things from falling into the v grooves you know convenience putting our scraper up here where we can get to it absolutely easy we always know where it is we don't have to find it don't have to pull it out of a bag <laughs> to use it and then uh, performance absolutely that Z access long-term usage we do not want to bend that rod and have to replace it so definitely a great print yep. uh, if there's anything that you know of that we should should upgrade yeah what do you guys like what upgrades do you like yeah. we've got a couple more we want but anything um, that you guys could recommend would be awesome uh, let us know below in the comments and we'll see you next time all right guys bye